Christian, is this a bubble burst thing? Listen, I think um, you definitely are dealing with a significant valuation reset here. There's no doubt about it. And to some extent, um, that, that was in the making. You remember we spoke about that a few months ago, um, and we wrote about that in our balanced air research. Unfortunately, coming out of COVID, you had this constellation of both bonds and equities being incredibly expensive. And now you're entering in a, into a very challenging growth inflation mix. Uh, where I think inflation is sticky, growth is decelerating, and I think the market is now derating those valuations. And as you were saying, in particular in the markets where I guess the uncertainty on the growth and or the earnings is the highest. So long duration um, tech uh, more recently, um, and before that cyclic goods versus defenses. I think they've also been derated materially. How far along in this derating, Christian, are we? Always tough to say because if you look at valuations compared to um, the average since the 90s, um, we're, we're moving below that average now. But we know we're not in the 90s anymore. I think we're dealing with much higher inflation, much higher inflation volatility, a very different uncertainty on monetary policy. And even the growth picture, I think, has certain uncertainties, um, which are maybe more tactical in nature with Russia, Ukraine, and China. Um, but I think there's also some structural questions with regards to what's the next growth engine. So you could argue that the valuation derating um, um, could continue. But what I would say, though, is, and, and I think John mentioned that earlier, I think we start to see the, the peak a bit in, in the bond yields. And we, we, we also have seen tentative signs of the peak in inflation. And we might shift from a high and rising inflation regime to something where inflation maybe is starting to, to decline. So we that could start to, to stay things a bit. Hopefully uh, we didn't disrupt anything too much and anyone's calling from the compliance department to say uh, no, please I think stop. he cleared it perfectly. I asked <laughs> is it a bubble and he said it's a valuation re-rent rating. I okay. mean that's, that's, that's how you do this diplomatically. All right so that we didn't necessarily uh, get the DJ in charge to call and get uh, complain. I am wondering what the opportunities are that might be emerging if the derating has been uneven or perhaps heavy-handed. Do you see any opportunities or do you think that at this point hiding out in treasury in duration, in the dollar, seems to be a better bet and just go with the flow. Listen, I think near term, we, we might easily be stuck a, a bit longer in a, in a fat and flat range, as, as we've been saying. The range is getting fatter and flatter, if you know what I mean. So the volatility definitely has been a bit larger. Positioning and sentiment is getting more bearish um, as we speak, and that creates a symmetry, that creates opportunities. But you still need to find momentum. Like a, a good trade, a good investment thesis is always built on good asymmetry, uh, kind of more upside than downside and, and, and good momentum. And I think right now you have to be very selective in picking those battles. I think we've been very focused on real assets um, and I think um, opportunities related to that. Um, I think clearly commodities um, are pretty high up in that range and commodity related assets. Infrastructure is a very interesting real asset because it doesn't do only well when inflation is high. It also does well when inflation is high and falling. Um, but I think clearly what we need to engage with in the next six to 12 months as we kind of look a bit forward is, is to really add risk um, and eventually add cyclical risk because that's where the market is getting the most bearish. So you can think about um, at some point the CapEx cycle um, driving selective opportunities. You can think about kind of even uh, places that are linked to, to the consumer discretionary spending, which are clearly um, a lot under pressure. Eventually, they will prov provide good asymmetries. Well, Christian, as you say these things and as John, Lisa and I have been talking about the brutal action we have seen in the market, someone writing into me on Twitter that the three of you make me want to crawl up in a ball, crawl up into a ball and cry this morning. And I'm sure there are a lot of people out sure, there who are feeling that. that way. For those people who just want to pull their money out of the market and go into cash, what would you advise them about how much cash you want to hold now to redeploy when those opportunities you just were talking about present themselves? Yeah, I mean, this is a very tough thing to generalize because it depends on each individual investor, the circumstances, you know it, like the risk tolerance and 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 these type of things. But I think we've been overweight cash um, since uh, the beginning of the year. And, and I think I'm not saying that um, there's not opportunities emerging for medium term investors, but I do feel a, a decent cash allocation still makes sense. I think to your point, 
um, I think bonds are starting to buffer a bit. So you could argue that if you're really worried about um, a recession, um, kind of starting to introduce duration risk via bonds back in the portfolio might make sense. But what we've been saying is that um, duration to some extent is not a buffer right now, it's a risk. So it really depends on, on what you own right now. If you own long duration assets, I think adding duration back in the portfolio probably um, doesn't make much sense. So I think a decent cash allocation makes sense. Real assets, um, kind of assets that, that can protect you from debasement. If you're a dollar, investment, uh, a dollar investor, that's been difficult because the dollar has been the key um, safe asset. But if you are a, a non-US investor, um, clearly the dollar still has um, that characteristic that currently it's protecting um, and kind of purchasing power as the Fed is fighting inflation.